Good morning, everyone. Good morning as you are coming in. Let's do a sound check on this morning. If you can hear me well on this morning, just say, Pastor, we can hear you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. So good morning to all of you all that are joining on this morning. We just thank the Lord for another day in the land of the living. All right. So let me see here. All right. So, Sister Tiffany, if you can hear me, let me know if you can hear me on this morning. Don't need to do this. Make sure we can hear you. All right. No cracking, no popping. Good morning, Sister Joyce Randolph Allen. Good morning to you. Good to see you. Praying for you, believing all that shall be well. In the name of Jesus. No cracking, no popping. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Just had to check it on this morning. All right, listen, we're about to get started on this morning. <clears throat> Truly today, that it is the hour is 725, and I want to get started on time this morning because there's some things that... L.A. Spears, good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Okay, I see Brother Reginald has a new graphic up. Looks like Wolverine or somebody. Okay. Well, this is a good day to be alive. <clears throat> I'm going to ask if you all will go ahead and share this on your social media. Invite someone in. Let them know that we are on. Um, yeah, let them know we are on this morning. I'm on the road, but we are here. Sister Judy Bell, good morning to you. I see you, sis. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Sister Lawana Wilcox, let me come on and just speak for a moment. Good morning, Latasha. Latasha Nobles, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we are about to get started on this morning. I know we're a little early, but I want to start this teaching at 730. But I wanted to make sure that you all would be able to hear me. So let's get started on this morning. I want you all to hit that share button. I want you to invite um, and let the saints know Jasmine Davis, El Paso, Texas. They are on this morning. Well, good morning to you also. All right. I'm excited. I'm excited. Are y'all excited this morning about the word of the Lord? Because we do have a word this morning. Now, listen, I'm not running at my normal um, 1,200 megabytes per second. So there's a little delay. Y'all bear with me. Um, but we're going to be all right. OK, so listen, I want you to share. I want you to invite this morning and let's get started with this God Conversations. How many of y'all are going to share this morning? If you're going to share, you're going to tag this morning. Matter of fact, let me do it myself. I'm telling y'all to do something I ain't even done myself. Yeah, so let me go ahead and do that. All right. I am actually in North Carolina this morning. Yesterday morning, I was in the um, um, McDonough, Georgia area. And I have flown into North Carolina to pop up on my mother to surprise her, to see her, um, just to check on her. And so I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. And um, I, what is it, Monday, Labor Day? I believe it's Labor Day. I hope y'all don't eat too much. Hope y'all behave yourselves. All right, Sister Jasmine, what my brother Kyle Davis? Tell him I said good morning. All right, the hour is 7.28 I think that this is a good time to get started. Well, welcome to God Conversations this morning, where we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are loving on you, God's people, and we are watching God change lives one conversation at a time. 
Let's get started on this morning. Je vis pour s'aimer et me battre pour toi tous les jours. Hola, soy de Santa Cruz, Isla Vírgenes, de los Estados Unidos. Vivo para amarte y luchar por ti diariamente. From South Africa, in Afrikaans. Et clever for your left hand and the play for your dark left. Well, listen, good morning to all of you all. And once again, welcome to God Conversations, where we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are loving on you, God's people, and we are watching God change lives one conversation at a time. Listen, let's get started on this morning. I'm excited about the word of the Lord. Can somebody just type on this morning a divine stripping? a divine stripping that is what we're going to talk about this morning and before we get started i just want to show you something real quick on this weekend we have the the official launch of ministry in motion pop-up prayer in partnership with whirlwind ministry and jacob's healing hands this is sister felicia butts and i believe also sister sabrina um gerby I believe this is Sister Chantel Gerby. Sorry, Sister Chantel Gerby. Listen, they will be launching on Saturday, September the 4th, 2021. The time is 11 a.m. at Ashley College Town, 387 Joseph E. Laurie Boulevard, Atlanta, Georgia, zip code 30310. So listen, if you are in the area, please go and support share and this listen this is going to be an awesome launch these two women of god in ministry i believe they're going to do some awesome things um i if i would have been in town i most definitely would have been there but i believe sister tiffany if you're in town if you can if you're not busy um but you might be on the road to for your mother's birthday not sure but if not i know elder die will be there and they will have some support from this kingdom alliance and god conversations family I'm excited about this. All right. Are y'all ready? So, Father, on this morning, give us what we need for this assignment. Nothing more, nothing less. Release your predestined power that causes men and women, boys and girls, saints and sinners to be transformed to the very image of your son, Jesus Christ. And when you do these things, we shall give your name all the glory and all the honor. And it is so in Jesus name. And everyone said, Amen and a man well listen once again i thank the lord for 
let me get my bearings straight. I believe it was, <clears throat> it wasn't, I did a morning, I did a live yesterday morning and I did an evening live, I believe the night before. And I believe it was awesome. I believe, I believe the Lord blessed and I believe he smiled upon us. Sister Felicia, it's good to see you, sis. Um, Sister Felicia, um, I believe it was awesome. But on this morning, we are going to go another way. And I just want to say this to you on this morning. I want you to pray for me. Um, the Lord gave me this this morning. A divine stripping, Elder Die. When we begin to strip ourselves to make sure that our brothers and sisters are clothed in what they need from the Lord. Are y'all ready this morning? I'll text on this morning. First Samuel, the 18th chapter, commencing at the first verse and an including Number four, number four, the Bible declares here in first Samuel, the 18th chapter, it says, and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of David was knit with the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword, to his bow and to his girdle. Um, on this morning, I, I just wanna talk about this for a couple of minutes. When the Lord dropped this um, on me, I, I began to meditate and I was thinking about it. And I want you to look at ministry as it relates to relationships as having the responsibility and being accountable to one another. Um, so if you have a brother, if you have a sister in Christ, there are some things about their lives. Watch this. Let me say it again. There are some things about their lives that you should be so concerned with that you should be asking, Lord, what is it that I need to do to make sure that they are covered? Not just, watch this, not just um, being able to receive a text, not be, being able to receive an email, but is my voice in their life? Is is my prayers in their life? Can they feel the love that I have for them? I want you to hear this on this morning. I want you to look at, as this story evolves, when we look at the life of David, and I want to bring you up to this 18th chapter, the Bible says that in the 16th chapter, I believe it is, is when Samuel comes to the house of Jesse and he anoints the next king, he says, I'm here to anoint the next king of Israel. Um, good morning, Sister Whitlock. And it's interesting that when we look at this, that David is out in the field. We all know the story. He's tending the sheep, and some of you may not know the story. He's the youngest of the sons of Jesse. He's out tending the sheep. No one mentions his name. Um, the Bible says that Samuel tries to pour the oil on his other brothers, but the oil would not flow. But then the Bible says, that Samuel could not complete his assignment. So he says there has to be someone else because this oil is not flowing. Then Samuel said, okay. He asked the father, is there anyone else? Um, are, are we missing someone? He said, because apparently there has to be someone else because the oil is not flowing. I cannot complete my assignment. So there's something wrong here. And he says, well, we do have um, one more son or, and his name is David, but he's out tending the sheep. And Samuel said, well, go get him because I will not sit until he comes. Well, when David arrives and he shows up, the oil starts to flow. After the oil flows, now the second part, 17th chapter, the Bible says now we hear about Goliath pitching himself before the children of Israel and the armies of God. Now, this is where I want you to see something here. So you have David tending the sheep. You have David not being noticed. You have David not even receiving an invitation. 
But then you have David called to this, this, this consecration, this ordination. And he's the recipient of the oil that no one even thought that he was worthy of carrying. Now, here it is. Now the 17th chapter, Goliath comes on the scene. Now we got an enemy. But now this is where it turns at. When you look at this and you look at our lives, and some of you all on here, <clears throat> if you have a best friend, if you have a spiritual covering, if, if you have someone that you know you can depend on, I want you to say, Pastor, I, I have someone. If, if you have a Yakad, Yakad is your kindred brother and your kindred sister. If you have a Yakad, I want you to say on this morning, I have a best friend. I have an accountability partner. Um, a couple of months ago, I encouraged you all to get a study partner, someone that you can study with, pray with. I don't know if you did it or not. I hope you did it. Um, but I know some people take things like that for granted. And I'm going to show you why it's so important in this text. Yeah, I have someone too. Um, I think that's very important because the truth of the matter, I'm going to show you something, how when you don't take, um, let me take a survey real quick. How many of you all have a study partner? Just, just let me ask you, I think it was about three or four months ago, the Lord said, tell the people to get a study partner, somebody they can study with, somebody they can pray with. Um, I want to show you something this morning um, that's going to help you, and I, I promise you it's going to help you. You, you need someone to study with and you need someone that can really help you. Um, and I'm going to show you why. Because you need someone that loves you. Watch this. Not because they have history with you, but because they have a revelation of you. All right. So let, let's let's go here on this morning. Now, I want y'all to hear this. Now, I'm waiting for some more hands. So I have Tiffany, Sister Jasmine, Sister Burrow, Elder Di. I know I have some more people on here. So I'm I'm going I'm to wait a little bit and see who has a study partner. I thought I don't. I thought I did. That's funny. Okay. Um, she said she thought she had a study partner. Sister Marilyn Walker said, I do. Okay. Let, let me tell you something. This this is important right here. It may sound simple, but this is important. You need a study partner. It may, you know, some people may think that, oh, well, I, I really don't. Yes, you do. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. Because when the Bible, when David gets anointed, we never hear of David having any friends prior to him being anointed. OK, so I want you to watch this, Sister Judy Bell. So here it is. The Bible says that after David gets anointed, then he's introduced to Jonathan. Watch this. He's introduced to Jonathan because where he is going now, he needs someone that sees his capacity and they don't have his anointing. I want I want y'all to hear this this morning. This, this is going to be good. Watch this. Watch this. This is good. Watch this. I'm texting somebody. Hold on. Because th this is going to be good. Now, so here it is that the Bible says after he gets anointed, he's introduced to what the Bible would consider Elder Di. This is his first friend. Now, the Bible doesn't say that David had friends prior to this. The Bible basically says that David was isolated. He was out tending the sheep. Um, his testimony was he killed the bear and he killed the lion. But now when we look at this, after he gets anointed, the Bible says, watch this, look at the text here. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul. David is talking to Saul. Saul had asked David, who, who is your father? What, where do you come from? That the soul of Jonathan, watch this, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan 
loved him as his own soul. Wait a minute. You got to look at the text now. The soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would not let him go anymore to his house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. I need you to hear this. The Bible never said that David loved Jonathan. Jonathan loved David. He saw something in David that he felt he could glean from, but he also knew David doesn't know anything about royalty. He, he, he doesn't know anything about fine dining. He doesn't know anything about guard. Y'all hear me. He doesn't know how to function in this atmosphere. He, he doesn't know anything about that. And so the Bible says, watch this. Here it is. Here it is. This is going to get better. The Bible says that Jonathan strips himself of his royal garments because of the revelation and the destiny and the anointing that he sees upon David. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Watch this. You, you have to understand that you need somebody in your life. If you ain't willing to strip yourself, come on now. If you're not willing to strip yourself for someone that you love, then I have to ask, how can you be in covenant with somebody you're not willing to strip yourself for? Okay. Oh, I'm about to turn it in a minute. Oh, I'm about to turn this in a minute. I'm about to see the truth of the matter. People have decided what you need from them, but they don't know what you need. They think, oh, you you just need somebody to eat with. You just need somebody, you know, to, to encourage you. You just need somebody. No, no, no. You you are you willing to strip yourself? Come on now, somebody type of. Are you willing to strip yourself? Or, or but or, but are you willing to strip yourself? Or are you so into you and your mentality? Your arrogance, what you want, you don't think that the revelation of God that's on my life is big enough. My destiny is not big enough. The anointing is not big enough to cause you to strip yourself. Shannon Ray, listen, we, we can stop right there because the truth of the matter, you have to be so careful when you trying to love somebody that's anointed. And they got to lead, but you're not willing to strip yourself. See, in stripping yourself, you're not robbing yourself of anything. You are telling your friend, you are telling the person that you love, I got you. Hmm. My God today, listen, my God, listen, 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 just, listen. can y'all share this with somebody? Because your friends need to hear it's okay that you love me. Yeah, it's okay that you hang out with me. It's okay we go to church. But are you a stripper? Can Will you strip for me? I can't hear nobody. Are you willing to strip yourself to make sure that I'm covered? My God, today. Lord Shannon, is that all right? Shannon Ray, is that all right? Are you willing to strip yourself to make sure that I'm covered over here? Oh, my God. There's so many people that they think, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. They think because they have a relationship with you that y'all good. But a revelation of who I am and who I am becoming will cause you to strip yourself. I got to the y'all. Listen, listen. Okay, I'm, I'm going to just let that sink in for a moment. Okay. I want you, I want you to hear it. I, wa I want you to hear it. The, let, let, let's just talk about it for a moment. Preach girl one. Watch this. Let, let's just talk about this for a moment. When you see the potential of God in someone's life, and you love them and you say, I know that God is going to do this. And I know God is going to do this. I know God is going to do that. You know what happens? You have to strip yourself. And listen, if you ain't willing to strip yourself, then how can you truly become intimate with that person? Oh, God. 
Y'all better hear me on this morning. Let, let, let's say, how, listen, what's the use of trying to be intimate, have relationship, whether it's eros, filio, agape, regardless of what, if you're not willing to strip yourself, then how will your love ever become a covering to me? For God so loved the world that he stripped himself of his only begotten son and put him on the cross, allowed him to be stripped and beaten with stripes. Y'all not hearing me, but he stripped himself. He bought the stripes because he wanted us to have a covering. Your love should not just be emotionally induced. It should be a covering. I'm trying to help somebody this morning trying to help somebody. On, on this Friday, this fortified Friday, I want you to survey some relationships of people who say they're in your life. Watch this. Not what are you, what, I, I don't want you to judge about what you're giving to me. Are you willing to strip yourself to make sure that my destiny is covered? Now, I want you to hear this. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible says, the Bible says, I didn't say it. The Bible says, look, look, I got to show you this again. Look at this, Tanya Burden. Look at this. Look at this. The Bible says, and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And then they made a covenant with one another. Skip down. And the Bible says, and Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. You, you know what? You know what he did? Jonathan said, David, I want you to take my robe. Because now you are about to walk into the king's palace. Um, I, I don't know if Tiffany might, don't mind me sharing this, but the other day she told me, she said, um, and if you all don't know that this is Tiffany, all right. And the other day she, she told me something that I thought was powerful and it, it goes into my che teaching this morning. So I want to use it. If you all don't mind, she told me something. She said, um, some years ago, she said, elder die came to me and this is elder die. She said, elder die came to me and she said, I want to meet with you and I want to take you somewhere. And I want to teach you about this because you're going to be going into rooms and you're going to be going into different places. And I want you to be equipped to handle that. See, the thing that people don't understand. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Your gift can get you into a room. But if someone didn't strip themselves. To make sure that when you get in the room, you are covered. You will not remain in that room. So she said, Elder Dot took her out. And Elder Dot said, I want to teach you this. 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 Because I want you to know when you go places, this is what this is. This is how you do this. This is how you. It didn't take anything from Elder Dot. But it covered the places that Tiffany would have been seen as having a weakness. And I got to ask you, people that are in your life. What are you doing to make sure that if I'm in a room, if I'm in the midst of warfare, if I got to face something, that I'm covered by what you are willing to strip off of yourself? Come on now. Sometimes we don't even think about that. Sometimes we don't even consider that we need to strip ourselves. And if you don't strip yourself, because of the person that you say you love the most, then really you do not love them. You love you. I want to use a phrase that Sister Tiffany taught me. Sometimes you are in love with your love, but you're not in love with the person. You're just committed to your love, but you're not committed to the relationship. Because when you are committed to a relationship, when you are committed to a covenant, it is impossible for you not to strip yourself. The first stripping we see in Genesis, shall a man leave his family, leave his mother, leave his father, strip himself and cleave to his wife. You can't love someone and not strip yourself of what, watch this, of what makes you comfortable. Jonathan said, here's my robe, Doc. 
take my robe. He is my bow. He is my girdle. He's and David, this is the thing. David didn't ask for anything, but watch this, Tiffany. But his anointing required that you be covered like this. The anointing that's on my life, the anointing that's on your life, where we are in this season and where we are shifting to, it is required that you are covered. I had someone call me last night, and we don't talk all the time. And I love when people call me and encourage me to don't talk all the time because I know they've been praying for me. Sometimes when people talk to you all the time, they stop praying because they think you're going to tell them everything. No. And they call me, they begin to minister to me and begin to give me the same language that the Lord was speaking to me. And, and But what they said was so powerful. They said, your voice is needed in this season. They said, this is where the Lord has you. Your voice is needed in this season. And what they did is they knew at that moment, they said, there's nothing wrong with me. Watch this, stripping myself of this moment, just taking time to encourage my brother and to encourage my sister. Are y'all hearing me? On this morning, I want you to see something. Sometimes there are people who struggle. They struggle with relationships in ministry. They struggle and say, I don't know if, if I have any friends and I don't know if I have this, but I'm going to ask you a question. Do you honor the friends that God sent? Do you honor the Jonathans that's in your life? Do you really honor the Jonathans that's in your life that say, hey, I'll pray with you if you want prayer. Listen, I will fast with you if you want if you want to fast. I will study with you if if that's really what you want. But some people, watch this. Some people that I don't know if they want that or not. Watch this. Sometimes people don't they don't want that. Sometimes, sometimes they just like I'm good. I don't know why my light died, but oh well. Um, but sometimes people don't want that. Sometimes they're just comfortable where they're at, and I guess they say, well, you know something, I'm gonna just be here. I'm gonna just stay here. But there's some people that understand. I need God to do something in my life, watch this, that is awesome, and this is what I need. I need God to do something that's awesome in my life, and I need a Jonathan. Anybody, anybody listening to me this morning say, I need a Jonathan in my life. I need somebody that's willing to strip themselves. I need somebody that's willing to love me. I need somebody that's willing to pour into me, but this is the thing. If you're not willing to strip yourself for the people that you say God placed in your life, then you got to ask the question, what kind of covenant do you have? What kind of covenant does a man or a woman have with one another if the woman, if the man ain't willing to pray for the woman, if the woman ain't willing to pray for the man, what kind of what kind of covenant is that? That ain't covenant, that's attraction. And that attraction in ministry will lead to an attack because you are not ministering to me according to the revelation that's on my life, you are ministering to me according to what's relatable between you and I. You are attracted to me, I'm attracted to you. But what about the revelation? Do we complement the revelation of God on one another? Good morning, Brother Rodney Johnson. Brother Rodney, I looked at this and I, I want to show you something for a moment. Watch this. Here it is. Here it is right here. The Bible says, that Jonathan stripped himself for a stranger, but he recognized the anointing and the potential on his life. In this season, the Lord is going to introduce you to some people. She says she need a Jonathan. I am a Jonathan. Hold up. Wait a minute. Mm -mm. Don't do that. Wait a minute. Watch this, Tiffany. I am a Jonathan. I push. I push you. Wait a minute. Mm -mm. Hold on. I felt some kind of way about that. Watch this. I want you to hear this. He was a stranger to David, but but he saw the anointing and the potential that was on David's life, and he loved what he heard. Now this is the thing that you got to understand. This is very powerful. Watch this. Jonathan had never seen David operate in the anointing. He had never seen him operate in the anointing. He had never seen him operate in the anointing. He had never seen him flow. He had never heard him sing. He ain't heard David write no psalm, no nothing. But 
he saw something in him that he said, even if I'm royalty, your revelation is greater. Your revelation is going to comp accomplish more in the kingdom than my royalty. My God, today, listen, listen, we can close right there, Elder Die. What happens when someone meets you, Elder Die, and we meet people and they say, listen, I know I'm royalty. I know I'm a king. I know I'm a queen, but I want to make sure that you have everything you need to win because the revelation that's on your life is going to accomplish, accomplish more in the kingdom than my royalty. So I'm stripping myself to make sure that you understand and you have the right strategy and the keys to your success. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I want you to understand this morning. The Bible says, the Bible says that David was out tending the sheep. He was by himself. And this is what's powerful. This is what's powerful right here. David, according to the text, he's never introduced to a friend until he understands I'm anointed. I'm no longer just a common sheep herder. I'm not just somebody that keep the sheep. I am anointed. And sometimes, watch this, sometimes Shannon Ray. There are certain covenants, there are certain friends that you're never going to be introduced to until you take ownership of the all that's on your life. You try some people, some people may try to figure out what, what, why don't, why don't I have this? And why don't I have that? It's because you haven't taken ownership of the anointing on your life. See, when you take ownership of the anointing on your life, that's when you're going to get you a study partner. That's when you gonna get somebody to pray with because you're going to understand that there's no way that you can be anointed and not that anointing not lead you into an attack. The first assignment that David faced in the kingdom was to fight a giant that was defying the armies of the living God. So when you get anointed, usually after you get anointed, it is going to lead you into a place of attack. And you need someone that will cover what's on your life, that will cover your warfare, that will cover your mind, that will cover your emotions, and make sure that, watch this, that you are never uncovered. You have to take ownership of the anointing on your life. Once you start taking ownership of the anointing on your life, you are going to see the importance of establishing kingdom covenant. You're going to see the importance of having someone to pray with. You can't call people when things go bad and say, I need you to pray. You, you ain't prayed in months. But believers don't pray when there's emergencies. We pray every day. If you only pray when there's an emergency, that's not prayer. That's a petition. That's a cry. That's not prayer. Prayer is a relationship. It is not a moment. I'm trying to help you. When you, you say, we got to pray, we got to pray. That, that, that's not prayer. That's a petition. That's a plea. That's, that's crying out. Prayer is a lifestyle. Okay. I'm, Elder Dime, am I doing all right? I want you to understand this morning that some of you all, you are about to meet some kingdom counterparts. Tiffany, can I borrow your word this morning? Kingdom counterparts. I'm, I may not be your intellectual counterpart, but you are about to meet your kingdom counterpart. You are about to meet some people that God has ordained their lives. He has ordained your life. Watch this for you to strip, for them to strip, to make sure that both of you are covered. I need you to understand that sometimes people don't take this seriously, but you need people in your life that are willing to strip themselves to make sure that you become successful. Listen, listen, Jonathan could have said, well, I'm not stripping myself because according to the law of the land, I'm the I'm the prince. So I should become the next the next king. That would have been the order. But look at the humility of Jonathan to say, my father is the king. But God just put all on David. 
And David just accomplished something that my father would not accomplish. And watch this. Jonathan was there, but he didn't fight either. Wait a minute. You got to remember now contextually, it wasn't that Jonathan was absent from the battle. He didn't fight either. I guess Jonathan said, look, if my daddy ain't willing to fight, I ain't fighting either. <laughs> look, all these men out here, this whole army, ain't nobody moving. I ain't moving. Like those so nobody move, nobody gets burned. Watch this. He said, I ain't moving. He said, my daddy ain't moving. The soldiers ain't moving. Because if you remember at the at at the at the final chapter of Jonathan's life, when Saul went to fight, you remember that Saul, the armor bearer, and Jonathan fell upon the sword together. And they died. And that's when Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, was dropped and he became lame on his feet. So it's not that Jonathan was not at the battle. Jonathan didn't have it in him to defeat Goliath. So when he watched David operate in the oil. Y'all not hearing me. When he watched David. When he watched David kill Goliath and he brought the head of Goliath into the house of Saul. He listened to this man say, listen, I'm just a sheep herder, but you got oil, you anointed. Well, I, 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 just, I just work a little job over here, but you anointed. Well, you know, um, I, I just do this and I'm from a small little country town, but you anointed. And watch this, watch this. Look, can, can somebody type this? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Janika's name because she's from Bisco, so this is going to fall right in place. Don't allow your country to determine the capacity of your covenant. David was out in the fields tending the sheep in a rural area, but the prophet had to go find him. Y'all not hearing me. Covenant will find you. Y'all better hear me this morning. Don't you say, oh, I'm I'm just from a little a little little town in the country, so you know this is how we do it in the country. But that doesn't determine your covenant capacity. Lord, Lord, I'm teaching better than what y'all saying this morning. Come on, talk to me. Your covenant capacity, prophet, is when you don't allow the country that you are from, the town you are from, the family you are from to determine your covenant capacity. Look at David. The Bible says that once he came out of the country and he began to operate in his anointing and his oil, the capacity was endless. It stretched him far and beyond where he was. People used to, I remember I was reading Bishop Jake's book, um, Why Because You Are Anointed. And he talked about how he was in West Virginia and how he couldn't finish the roof on his house. And he would be walking the railroad tracks and he would come home and Tell his children, we're going to play a game and whoever can make it to their room and not hit their toe, you're going to get a prize because the lights was out. But West Virginia did not determine his capacity for Dallas, Texas. It did not determine his capacity when he set a new record in the Georgia Dome for attendance at Negafest. Don't you dare look at the little town and the little country you from and allow it to determine your covenant capacity. My covenant can shift me far and beyond where I'm from. Now unto him, Ephesians 3 and 20, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think through the power that worketh in us. The power is dunamos. That means covenant. I have covenant inside. You can be from Dayton. You can be from Spring Lake. You can be from Beaufort, South Carolina. Look at this little country girl right here. This, this little country girl right here, Tiffany. Tiffany is from Beaufort, South Carolina. But the Lord is using her to implement policy all the way in Washington, D.C. Y'all better hear what I'm telling you. It doesn't matter what country you are from. That does not determine your covenant capacity. God is going to allow you to meet somebody that is willing to strip themselves to make sure that you are successful Woo, in this shift. My God, today, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He go, he go, he's sending people in your life right now. That's challenging you, that's pushing you, that's pulling you out of your comfort zone. 
and said, I listen, where you are going, I got to strip myself. I got to show you that this is how you eat. This is how you walk. This is how you sit. This is how you dress. This is how you present. You got to slow down when you're speaking. I was telling Sister Ashley, I said, Sister Ashley, you are going to be a powerful public speaker. I said, because you have the heart for people. And if you got a heart, I said, there's an anointing that will follow that. And I said, I said, and I walked up to her even when it was in Orlando. I said, everything that you're saying, I want you to slow it down. And she was so nervous. She said, I was so nervous. She said, I was so nervous. I said, but you did well. You did well. You you all may not know it, but in Orlando, that was the first time that I heard Natasha give her testimony. She took her time. She articulated. She was anointed. She was powerful. She conveyed what the Lord had done. Why? Because you have to place people in their capacity. Listen, don't listen. I, I listen. I don't have the ministry to put you in your custom. I have the assignment to put to place you in your capacity. I'm a birther. I'm a pusher. That's who I am. I can't just put you in the place that everybody watch this had you, um, you know, for years. Well, this is what I did in my former church. This is well, well that was your custom. I have to put you in your capacity. Y'all not. Y'all not here. I, I got to put you in your capacity. Somebody on this, I got to put you in. Yeah, yeah, I've been attending this church for years, pastor, and I served on the, the pastor committee and I ushered. Yeah, but that's your custom. But I got to pray and ask the Lord, where is your capacity? Because where your capacity is, that's where the glory and the anointing of God is going to show up. Am I talking to somebody on this morning? Can somebody just type on this morning, Lord, put me in my capacity. Who put me in my capacity. Yeah, I knew I grew up singing in the choir. I know I've been playing the keyboard for all these years. I know I've been ushering. I know I've been doing this, but no, 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 no. But I got to put you in your capacity because if I don't put you in your capacity, the true covenant of God is never going to be authenticated on your life. There were people who were talking to me. They were like, they were talking to me about Sister, um, Sister Waheba. And they said, why Heba is powerful. I didn't even tell her. They said, I spoke to her and I just listened to her spirit. And why he will say, well, you know something? I, I, I don't come from the church and I wasn't raised in the church. But guess what? Your capacity is kingdom. Your capacity is intercession. Your capacity is, is, is servanthood. Y'all better hear me this morning. Watch this. Look, look, Sister Ashley, she said, you know, I come from the Baptist church and, you know, they taught me this. She said, but when I came over to the kingdom, I began to learn about seas. I began to learn about um, transubstantiation. I began to learn about the meaning of the blood and, the, and baptism and what communion really meant. Why? Because, listen, kingdom alliance is not an assignment to hold you to your custom, our assignment is to bring you over into your capacity. My God, today. That's why some of us, we never met until it was time for you to shift into your capacity because your covenant and your, and your custom was hindering you. We couldn't even experience the authenticity of who you are in God because people were comfortable with your custom. And the Lord said, it's time for you to shift. Well, Lord, how am I shift? Because I'm going to send somebody that's going to strip the custom off of you and they're going to clothe you in your capacity. Now, I need you to hear this. If they, oh my God, oh my God. If Jonathan put his robe on David, <laughs> Tiffany, do you feel it? Can I say it? If Jonathan put his robe on David, y'all better hear it. Y'all better hear it. If Jonathan put his robe on David, that means he removed something from David and said, you don't need this anymore. Ah, my God, today. Come on. Come on. You, you look, son, you, you, you don't uh, you, you don't need this anymore. Uh-uh, uh-uh. It's like I used to tell my friend, uh, Pastor Gennario Campbell, you know, when I met him, I said, Doc, I said, I met an older man and he changed my life. He said, what you mean? I said, I was in a store and he had on some some um, cashmere wool blend great pants years ago. And I looked at his pants and I said, sir, those are some really nice pants. And he grabbed his buckle and he pulled his pants up. He said, oh, son, this is the good stuff. I need y'all to hear in this season, we about to put the good stuff on you. Y'all not going to go with me this morning. Jonathan said, look, David, you don't need these rags anymore, son. I'm putting the good stuff on you. I'm putting the God stuff on you. I'm putting on you what people will see and recognize surely. 
this must be God's anointed. My God today, we going to put something on you that when you walk in the room, people can say, surely this is God's anointed. We going to put something on you that when you stand up to speak, Ashley King, when you stand up to speak, Natasha, when you stand up to speak, Wahiba, people are going to say, surely this is God's anointed. Rodney Johnson, when you stand up, brothers, when you stand up, we are, but people are going to look and say, surely this is God's anointed. Why? Because we are stripping ourselves to make sure that you are successful successful in your assignment. My God today. Whoo, my God, my God. My God today. Anybody willing to strip on this morning? I hope people don't just take that part. So let me let me finish. Anybody willing to strip off customs to make somebody make sure that somebody else come into their capacity. I want you to hear it. I want you to hear it. Surely this is God's anointed. I'm almost there. 8.15. I, I want, th this is the thing I want to encourage you all. Sometimes you may feel like I don't have the right friends. I don't have the right support. No, you may not be in the right chapter. Because after God introduced David to his oil, he introduced him to his opposition. But then he introduced him, watch this, to his to his covenant, to his friend. I, I want y'all to hear this on this morning. In this season of your life, in this chapter of your life, you have to be willing to strip some things. How many of y'all know y'all have some things that you need to strip? It, it, it may not be a whole lot, but you say, but pastor, there are some things that I, I need to strip. Maybe you're selfish. Maybe, you know, a matter of fact, sometimes you just need to do an inventory. And I know people are so afraid to do this. But sometimes you need to ask people the question, what it is about, what is it about me that you can't receive? What What, what is it about me that you can't receive. Because a true friend. Good morning Pastor Ronnie Owens. A true friend is going to tell you. I love you. But. If I. If I. If I. If, if I didn't love you. Then I wouldn't say this. But you got to work on this right here. You you, you got to work on. Your humility. You, you got to work on your presentation. You got to work on how you address people. You got to work on if you snap on people. You got to work on how you love on people. I, I believe that the move of God in this, in this, in this, where we are right now is coming through two things. We're going to see the love and we're going to see the power of God. If you think about it, we would have never experienced the blood. We would have never experienced the Holy Ghost. If God wouldn't allow Jesus to be stripped. He's stripping us. He's crucifying us. So that somebody else can experience his power. And if that's you on this morning. I want you to just say listen Lord strip me some more. I'm not perfect. I'm still on the potter's wheel. Just like God told Jeremiah. He said, he said, Jeremiah, I wish that I could do with Jerusalem, with Israel, what this potter has done with this clay. All of us this morning can admit. We still need to be stripped in some areas. And if we can admit it, that means that we are willing to accomplish that which the Lord has placed at our hands. I want to encourage you this morning on this Friday. And I want to tell you, I'm proud of you. Sister Tiffany, I want to tell you, I'm proud of you. I know Sister Tanya is working. I want to, I want to tell you that I'm proud of you. Tanya Bernie, I'm proud of you. Ashley Shannon, uh, uh, Elder Don, I'm proud of you all. Because the thing that lightens my heart is when I see the revelation of this assignment become tangible. When I was in Orlando and I watched and I just sat back and I looked. And I looked at different people sitting at tables and talking to different ones and people saying pastor what do you need oh if if if, if and the and the thrillers were saying if we if we need to get to williams to the airport that's no problem we'll do it and they did it with no problem and and i watched and i said mm -hmm. because 
when you love someone, when you understand the revelation of love, when you understand the revelation of covenant, you are going to always be willing to strip yourself to make sure somebody else is successful. My God, e even when we were at um, the services and I said, Brother Charlie, I said, can, can you just walk by hand, Elder Die? And he and he and he moved into the armor bearer status. And then next thing I know, he moved to the back and he said, I'm going to assist Sister Shane, Jamie. Then he was helping Sister Jamie on the camera. It's because he was not willing. He was willing to strip himself to make sure that the assignment was successful. That's why we do what we do. Because watch this. We want to make sure that the assignment is successful. So on this morning, I just want to tell you all on this Friday, I am a proud, I'm proud of you. I applaud you. I commend you. I love you. I'm encouraged by you. I'm strengthened by you and keep loving on one another. It does my heart well when people check on one another. Sister Evangelist Tanya Burnett, she lost her father and she said, you know, Sister Tiffany reached out to me and some, some, some people reached out to me. You know, reach out to us. Some of us know what it feels like to lose a father. Reach out to her and say, sis, listen, I've been there and I just want you to know. The Lord may give you a word for her that may not come from one of us. But just reach out and say, listen, you're part of this family. And if you lost your father, then guess what? then we all have to carry this hurt. Come on. When one hurt, we all hurt. When one laugh, we all laugh. When one rejoice, we all rejoice. When one worship, we all worship. Amen. That, that's how I see Kingdom Alliance. When we say I live to love you and I fight for you daily, this is my mantle, my mandate, but it is also my pleasure to establish a legacy of love in your life. And that's what Jonathan did with David. He said he established a legacy of love. And David's like, no one, watch this, Tiffany. No one had ever committed to David's life. But Jonathan did it. Sometimes you are looking for the wrong people to commit to you. But God is sending someone to commit to your life that respects the revelation that's on your life. No one had ever committed to David. But here comes Jonathan. It says, I got you covered. Take off those clothes, David. Take, take all those rags off. He said, I'm about to clothe you in your destiny and your potential. This is where you go. And can you imagine how, how proud David felt to be a sheep herder? And now he has on royal garment. He, he's been adorned in new raiment. And he's like, wow. I would have never imagined that the anointing would have done this for me. I want you to get an I need you to get an imagination for what the anointing is able to accomplish on your life. My God today, Holy Ghost, I thank you for that one. You need to get an imagination. You need to start imagining what the anointing is going to accomplish in your life. Whew. Listen, listen, J Jonathan said, boy, you going somewhere. Listen, you going somewhere, Doc. You, you going somewhere. Listen, I need you to understand it. I need you, you need to get an imagination of the anointing that's on your life. Whew, Don, I got that one. I needed that for myself. You need to get an imagination that where, where the anoint, what the anointing shall accomplish in this season. It's going to do, it's going to go beyond what you can imagine. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think imagine he's going to he's going to do more than that he's go, you got to get an imagination thank you tiffany listen get an imagination for what the anointing will accomplish in your life oh that's fine that's what people need to do you don't just need to hear the preacher you got to get an imagination this is what god gonna do for me this is what prayer is going to do for me. This is what fasting. This is what consecration is going to do for me. This is what worship is going to do for me. I believe that God don't have no respect to persons. So guess what? I'm going to build my imagination. I'm going to build my expectation. And it is so in Jesus name. Whew. My God, my Savior. Lord, that blessed me right there. Get an imagination. Listen, every one of you all this morning, we are going to sow. On this morning, I kept hearing this $35 seed. That's what I was hearing this morning. 
I want everyone this morning. Songbird, you came in at the right time. Honey, get an imagination about what the anointing shall accomplish in your life. I need everyone on here, and I'm not going to say I need, if you are willing to release that $35 seed, and some of you all need to release a Pentecostal seed, a $50 seed. That's the Pentecostal seed, Feast of Weeks, where you are now, you are in harvest. But if this word applied to you on this morning, I want you to lift your hand this morning, and I just want you to type, I imagine greater. Mm. I imagine greater. Whew. On this morning, I want you to type this morning, if you're sowing, I want you to type, I imagine greater. People, uh, some things that we've done and accomplished, I don't know how the Lord did it, but he did it. And so on this morning, I want you to prepare yourself. Thank you, Sister Tiffany. I want you to just type on here, the seed is this morning. I imagine greater, greater, greater. Now unto him. That's why I just keep hearing. Now unto him. I imagine greater. I imagine greater. Good morning, Jamie Garfield. I imagine greater. I imagine greater. I'm preparing myself. Someone asked me last night. They said, Pastor, you okay? I said, yeah, I'm okay. But I feel the weight of the season. I feel the weight of the shift. I feel it. And I said, I'm just trying to get my breath for the race. I said, I'm just trying to get my breath for the race. So next week, I'm going to be on probably um, Monday is Labor Day. I won't be on Monday, so I'll probably be on Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I'm going on vacation. I'm going to do a five-day vacation, and then when I come back, we're going to hit the we're going to hit the ground in Atlanta, and we're going to start running. Amen. Somebody say it's time to launch the next chapter, and it shall be a successful one in the name of Jesus. Jamie, you bet on YouTube. Thank you, honey. I want you to understand, I imagine greater. This morning, if you will, if you are sowing, on this morning, let me see. Um, I hope I didn't delete it. Um, I think I did. Mm, oh, that's what I, there it is. On this morning, you can sow. It's time to launch. Yes, it is, Tiffany. It's time to launch the next chapter. Come on, Ashley King. Ashley King had an interview yesterday for a position that she's been interested in. Can somebody just say, imagine greater, Ashley, imagine greater. Yes, ma'am. Listen, if you are sowing this morning, I'm going to ask this morning that you show, that you sow at Cash App. If you will, sow at Kingdom Sowers, if you will. Just sow at the Kingdom Sowers this morning, if you will. Um, we usually do text to give, but on this morning, if you will, just sow at Kingdom Sowers on this morning. Um, K-N-G-S-O-W-E-R-S. Ashley, isn't it powerful? That once you start thinking a thing, I just need to come back on here and say this for a moment because I hear this. When Ashley started thinking a thing, things started shifting. I, I've watched some things in the last couple of weeks. I, I've watched some things in the last couple of weeks, and I'm trying. I'm trying to hold my tears. Um, Sister Natasha, she said, Pastor, when you shift, I'm shifting. She said, I had given my job two years, a two-year contract in management. As soon as we finish the shift, watch this, then she is brought into the Atlanta area to be trained for her next shift. If you can imagine it, you can obtain it. You better hear it. You got to see yourself greater. Uh, you know, th this is one of the things that I told Jamie, and I'm proud of her when I met Jamie, and y'all have heard how I saw something in Jamie, I said, and she probably don't understand it. But I said, I'm going to give you the push that nobody ever gave me. I want you to hear it. Because see, when I when I grew up, everybody told me, get a job and go to work and get a car and do this. And I played and I, and I sang and I taught a university choir. But no one told me to enroll in that university. I didn't think I was smart enough. I didn't think I didn't think I was bright enough because I didn't see that in my household. So I said, OK, well, we're, you know, we just anointed to preach and this is this and, you know, and working. But I watched the other people and I told my cousin Junior, I said, we played for these people all these years and we watched them go through college. I said, and some of them ended up in jail, ended up strung out on drugs. 
And he said, man, you know something? I'm gonna go to school. Now my cousin went to school. Now he owns his own business. I attended two seminaries. I'm going, I'm about to go back to school. And this is the thing. And I told Jamie, I said, sometimes your success is contingent upon the quality of encouragement that you receive. Sometimes you just need somebody to say, you can do it. And I watched Jamie go from the candy store to finish culinary school, to being afraid to enroll because she was scared of mathematics. And then the tutors, they were not they were not committed to her. So she taught herself. She sat by herself and she went and graduated once, twice, twice, because you just needed somebody to say that. Watch this. Don't allow your custom to determine your capacity. I can't hear nobody. Anybody on here understands that sometimes you got to see it in yourself. Woo. Sometimes, Ashley King, you got to see it in yourself. And that's why when the Lord gave me this song that I'm going to hold on until I see it, because I believe what the Lord put in me is great. I don't believe it's second to nobody. I don't compare myself to anyone. I'm the only one of my kind outside of my tall son, Patrick. I'm the only one of my kind. You are the only one of your kind. But this is the you have to see it in yourself. David said, I would have fainted. Lest I would have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the, who, in the land of the land. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. He said, I had to encourage myself. I went through a season mm, where I didn't have a prophet. I went through a season where I didn't have anybody speaking unto me. I went through a season of pastoring where the prophetic was closed to me. And I had to lead, I had to preach, I had to weep, I had to cry, I had to write, I had to travel. But I would go into 1412 and I said, but God, you're going to teach me here how to labor. You're going to teach me how to labor here. And those that were on my watch, they watched me. Ashley said, I remember you crying. I remember you hurting. But you saw me cry, but you never saw me quit. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You saw me weep. But you never saw me quit. And even before the tears could silence my voice, my tears released another song. I'm going to hold on until I see it. I need you to understand it. Sometimes before the tears can silence your voice, allow the tears to birth a new song. That's what Lamentations is. It's a whole book of lamenting and crying. And it says it is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Woo! But I thank God now that I survived the season. And to God sent prophetic reinforcement. I'm trying to keep myself. Because some people may not know how that feels. To preach and labor. And walk out. And go sit in a truck and just cry. And say, God, how much longer? And he don't speak. Because the yes is still activated. In anybody on here ever been at a place in your life? Watch this, Elder Dive. Don't don't quick it too much. When the yes is still activated, so you know the no is not an option. Can 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 I, can I stop now? No, you can't stop. Why? Because the yes, my yes is still activated. Tanya Burning, my yes is still activated. I couldn't quit because my yes was still activated. So no was not an option. Lawana, we had to bury friends that we love, but our yes is still activated. Mm. Mm. Woo. Oh, my God. I, I want you to hear my yes is still activated. I thought some years ago, I just can't. Can I just take a minute? I know it's past time. Just just let me encourage somebody real quick. Give me two minutes. I remember I, I remember years ago I was preaching at the church and Ashley and Jamie probably remember this and I finished preaching and I said I'm going to the hospital and the whole time I was preaching I felt like I was dying and I heard the enemy trying to speak in the atmosphere you're gonna die you're gonna die and I said to myself I said if I die I'm gonna die in this assignment and I preached I did the altar call and I felt like death was all over me. And then I stopped and I looked at the pe people in the ministry. I said, I'm going to turn the service over to you all and I'm going to the hospital. I'm going to drive myself to the ER. And I drove myself to the ER with tears running down my face, not knowing if it would be the last time. And when I got to the hospital, they said, 
Pastor Purcell, are you trying to kill yourself? They say, because you're on the verge of a stroke. And even in the midst of me being on the verge of a stroke, the yes sustained my life. Mm. Listen, we make no apologies. We make no excuses for being confident of this very thing. That he that had begun a good work in us shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Your yes is going to yield you a harvest. Can, can, I, can I just say that to somebody this morning? Your yes is going to yield you a great harvest. Don, don't you see it? Aren't you experiencing it? Aren't you experiencing it? When I heard Don sing at the conference and she hadn't sang in three years, your yes is going to yield you a great harvest. God is making you now the lender and not the borrower. He's making you the head and not the tail. Why? Because my yes is still activated. In this season, this is the last word, we're going to push you into your capacity. Tell somebody, get ready. Tag somebody in the room this morning and say, we're going to push you into your capacity. On this morning, if you are so, and Father, we thank you that we have something to give on this morning. And Father, what you don't give back to us in money, keep our bodies healed. Father, we thank you for the expansion of capacity in this season. Thank you for what you're doing in the lives of my brothers and my sisters. And it is marvelous in our eyes. We thank you for, oh God, this revival, this gathering you're about to do with men. God, you're about to mount these men up on hind's feet. I hear like horses coming. If thou hast run with footmen and they have wearied thee, how should thou contend with horses? God, you are releasing men in this season to contend with horses. And we say thank you. God, you are girding up our sisters and you're going to use them mightily, Father. In the name of Jesus, you are giving your people everything that they need in this season. And we say thank you. And we love you on today. And Father, now bless these seeds that they are releasing. You know their hearts. You know their desires. God, make sure that they want for nothing. Make sure that their children want for nothing. And Father, we say thank you. And we say to God be the glory on this morning. And we thank you that our yes is still active in the name of Jesus. And everyone said amen and amen. You all that are sowing, you've already sowed at Kingdom Sowers. If you didn't get a chance to sow, listen, sow this morning at Kingdom Sowers. The information I believe Tiffany put up today is my brother Samuel Purcell's birthday. I got to call him if he's in town, if I can take him out to lunch or something for his birthday. But listen, that is the seed for the day, a $35 seed and a $50 seed for those that understand that Pentecostal covenant. Listen, you all be blessed. I live to love you and I fight for you daily. And if you know me, then you know that I love you. By this, men will know that you are his disciples because you have love for one another. Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing, he that have begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. Happy birthday, Sam. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be sure to tell him. That you all say happy birthday. Amen. Yeah. I think Felicia and my brother Sam used to date. I could never find them at the church. All right. Listen. Y'all be blessed. I will see y'all um, uh, Monday, Tuesday morning. And y'all be blessed. Felicia, don't get me. But I couldn't find you. But watch this. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name. Love all of you all. Remember, this Saturday, Ministry in Motion, pop-up prayer in partnership with World Wind Ministry and Jacob's Healing Hands, time 11 o'clock a.m., Saturday, September the 4th, 2021, location, Ashley College Town, 387 Joseph E. Lowry Boulevard, Atlanta, Georgia, 30310. All right, you all be blessed. I love all of you all. Janika, y'all have a blessed day. <laughs>